Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. More specifically today we're going to go over arithmetic operations including uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, divide by, modulus, and exponents. Alright, so let's hop out here into this, um, this form that I've already designed and you'll see that I've got three different text boxes okay and text box one is called txt number where we can enter a number into it and then txt number two is a second box for us to enter a second number and then of course we need to display our results so I've got a txt result text box and I've locked it so that somebody can't go in there and, and enter a value in it's only going to show us what the results are between these two numbers now in between here I've got a frame. Now I haven't shown you how to use frames and actually they're also called option groups. Uh, frame is kind of a misleading term I think um, because if you're coming from another background in any other design uh, like especially for web design frame means entirely something different but for access a frame is essentially an option group and you'll see I'm, I, if I hover over here it's called option group. But um, it's also called a frame and within my frame, I've got several different radio buttons that are in here, okay? And the way that you put a radio button inside of a frame is that you select under the design tab. Well, first let me just show you. You, you have to select this X, Y, Z. Draw it on your, on your, um, on your uh, design view. And then you're going to select the radio button. Oops, excuse me here select the radio button or it's also I believe they call it an option button here and then when you hover the cursor over the frame that you've created you'll see that it cr uh, t uh, draws it in with a black background and that means that whatever the, whenever you click on this it's going to drop a radio button inside of the frame now the reason why we want to use a frame here is because we don't necessarily want to have to check each and every single one of these controls to see if it's true or not. You can do that, but it's kind of a waste of time, isn't it? It'd be nicer if we could figure out what the uh, what one of these options was selected, since we're only allowed to click on one, um, which one was selected. And in the background, in the code behind, we're actually going to be asking the frame itself. Notice I've named it FRA Math. We're going to be asking the frame itself for what its value is, and it's going to return the option value that we have under the data tab for that radio button that's been selected. So you can see option one is called option value one, so that's that's the plus sign. Okay. Option number two has an option value of two, and you'll notice I didn't even bother naming these radio buttons. Okay, it's called option 18. I don't even bother with that because where I'm going to be asking for my value is this FRA math. Okay, just as long as I've got an option value here under the data tab, I'm okay. So there's option value two, option value three is multiply, option value four is divide, option value five is another form of division, option six is the exponent sign, or you can see it looks like a, a, a caret sign. Okay, and then there's mod or modulus, which is a, a fancy way of saying remainder, okay, which is option value seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different options. And in the code behind here, let me just show you. I've declared three different variables, x, y, and result, and I've given them all the, val the value type of double, okay and we've got x being assigned whatever is typed into txt number and then y is whatever's in txt number two and here you can see I'm doing a select case on the frame right I'm asking the frame for its value and based upon what the user selects which one of those radio buttons it's going to return either one for addition okay which is uh, here I've said if they do select option value one I want to put in the result variable up here, which is a double. I want to put in a result of x plus y. Okay, and then down here at the bottom, you can see that after the the select case is done, I just simply plop it into my txt result text box. Okay, so if the user selects case one, it's going to do addition. 
If they select 2, it's going to do subtraction. If they select case 3, it's multiplication. If they select 4, then it's x divided by y. If they select 5, you can see that we have a different type of division. Here we have a divider where the it's a backslash, and here we have divided, which is a forward slash. Now the difference between these two is that if you have a backslash, it will drop the remainder, okay? Whatever the remainder is, it will drop it, and it will always be rounded down. It will never round up. It will always round down. So this may sound a little strange, but if I were to do 1 divided by 2, my answer would be 0, because 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, and since it's going to drop the 0.5, that's going to leave me with 0. Okay, it's going to round down to 0. Using the forward slash gives us the actual full result, including decimal values. Now, just make sure that when you're putting that result from an x forward slash y, you're dropping it into a value that can actually hold a decimal point, because if this was an a type of integer, then it would not do that for us. Instead, that would actually perform a rounding, an actual rounding, either up or down. So if that's how you want your, uh, you know, if you want your result to always be a whole number and have it rounded up or rounded down based upon if it's 0.5 or higher, then you could do the x forward slash y and just make sure you're putting it into a result variable, which is not a double, but rather would be an integer, okay? Or perhaps a long, which is essentially the same thing, okay? All right. Then we have x to the power of y, okay? Which, uh, if you haven't dealt with exponents, uh, I think you're going to be doing that sometime in your math classes. Um, and then we have x mod y, which mod is um, is a fancy way of saying remainder, okay? This is going to do x divided by y, and it's not going to give us the result of x divided by y. Instead, it's going to give us just the remainder value, okay? Uh, now that value will always be a whole number. In vb.net, and I believe in vb6 also, um, this isn't quite true. Oh, dang, box again. Um, in vb.net and, and uh, vb6, I believe that it actually would return, um, if you had two values of doubles, then it would return back as a double, and if you used two integers, then it would return just an integer. But in VBA, it will always return a whole number of your remainder, okay? Um, just so that you are aware of how that works. All right, so let's go ahead and go through a couple of these. And I set a breakpoint there on our select case statement. Let's just do 1 plus 2. We'll see that we go through here. And FRA math has been option number 1 has been selected, which is our plus sign. Remember, this here was option value 1. All right, which is is plus, so x plus y equals 3. We plop that into the result, which is 3, and then we assign the result value to our txt result text box. All right, and that's how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that breakpoint because I'm sure you don't really care to see that. Oops. <clears throat> so we've got a result of 3. All right, what's, what's, what's 1 minus 2? Well, that's negative 1, and you can see it handles negative values perfectly fine. Um, and you can, in fact, uh, give it a negative value here. So x minus negative 2 is 3, positive 3. Okay, because just like when you do a subtraction of a negative number, that actually turns it into an addition. So 1 plus 2, essentially, is equal to 3. All right, uh, let's not get a little too carried away with ourselves here. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 divided by 2 is 0. Again, remember, this is the difference between these two divisions. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, but since we are using the backslash, it automatically rounds down, which gives us a 0. If I use the forward slash, that's going to give us the actual full value, so long as the result uh, is capable of holding a decimal value. All right, then we have 1 to the exponent of 2, which is going to just give us 1. If I change this a little bit so that it looks a little bit more uh, slick here, 6 to the four, to the power of 4 is 1296. Okay, that's all 
fine and good. And then modulus gives us a remainder of 2. All right. So 6 divided by 4 is 1, and then the remainder is 2. All right. So that's how that works. Those are your different calculations that you can do. Um, feel free to explore and be as kooky as you want with all this, but uh, I hope that you understand that that's how this is all going to work on the back end, and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.